really can't. You now, when you really look at this entire hearing with the Twitter files, the Republican members, me they were prepared. They brought evidence. They executed it brilliantly. The Democrats, what did they do? They kept on going back to their same playbook. They kept on going back to January 6th. They kept on going back to all these different things because they have nothing else. They couldn't even ask real questions. I mean, shouldn't they be concerned about this? Well, the reason why they're not concerned about it is because they're in on it. Because wouldn't you be concerned with the First Amendment being violated? Wouldn't you be concerned with the FBI involved in telling a social media platform, and not just one, probably many, and fake news, where they're telling people who to take down? even though they're American citizens, there's a problem here. And Elon Musk, he responded to this entire hearing. He says, the woke Stasi felt the heat today. Absolutely. And Brian Moore responded to this and said, I recently went to the Stasi Museum in Berlin and found it interesting that they called themselves anti-fascists at the beginning. Elon Musk, exactly. Think about this country. Think about Antifa. They're anti-fascist, but they're the fascists. Actually, if you look at the D's and you look at all these different agencies, this is how fascism starts. Government now is working with private companies. Really think about this for a sec. And really think about, and we mentioned this yesterday, what Representative Anna Paulina Luna said. And it seems that she was the star during the hearings with the Twitter files. She exposed the hidden network operating in the background that is destroying free speech in America. The network includes DHS, CISA, DFITF, EIP, CIS, and others. And Luna brought proof that Yoel Roth was using the private software cloud JIRA to communicate with the FBI and government officials to silence conservative speech. And she kept asking, were you using this as a back channel? Yes or no? And he didn't answer the question. He kept avoiding it. And if you really look at this and everything that's happening right now, they, if you go back to the beginning, they really never thought that Hillary Clinton was going to lose. Actually, this is what got the whole ball rolling here, where she lost the election to Trump. Nobody was ever supposed to know how government worked with social media platforms. No one was ever supposed to know that the news was fake. No one was ever supposed to know that the big guy got 10%. Nobody was ever supposed to know that the Hunter Biden laptop was real. Nobody was supposed to know that Hillary Clinton paid for the Alpha Bank hoax. Nobody was supposed to know that the FBI hid the Hunter Biden laptop and manipulated the election. Nobody was supposed to know that the FBI used a fake steel dossier knowingly, knowing that this was uncooperated and they used it to get the FISA warrant. Nobody was supposed to know all of these things. And everyone is starting to know them. They're in a panic and it's everywhere. The deep state has lost control of information right now. Jonathan Turley put this out and said, Navaroli just explained the Twitter standard and it is chilling. Instead of asking free speech versus safety to say free speech for whom and public safety for whom, Elon responded to this and said, very concerning. Don Jr. put this out on True Social said the following, I've seen a lot in the Twitter executive's congressional testimony. Perjury, lying under oath, illegal interaction with government entities, election interference, collusion with government officials and pressure to censor conservatives. Will they face any consequences? Well, Trump, he responded to Representative Clay Higgins where he just came out and said it, where he said, prepare to be arrested for criminal interference in the 2020 election. So he came out and said it, get prepared because we're coming after you. Trump responded to this and said, finally, we have people with courage stepping forward. The election was rigged and stolen in so many ways, a mockery of our fully weaponized justice system. And yes, that is what people are starting to recognize. And as the house continually pushes, it's going to get worse and worse for the deep state players. They know this. They know they can't, push back on this. Yes, they're going to try to use propaganda. Yes, they're going to try to use emotions. Yes, they're going to use the old playbooks. But as they keep doing this, it gets worse and worse for them. No one is believing them, especially when the House starts to pull out documentation showing how they did it, showing the pattern. And it wasn't just done by accident. This is going to be the downfall 
of all of them. Remember, this is about exposing their system, bringing down their system. Let's go back to post 3848 because we've been talking about infiltration. We've been talking about the FBI. We've been talking about these certain agencies. And I find that this post is very interesting since all this is coming out right now. We have the weaponization of government, the Twitter files, and we're gonna see other investigations or hearings going on in the house. So when you look at this post, it says the bottom half was instructed 99% good. The first will send a shockwave. So this is gonna be very interesting moving forward. And I think this post is timed very, very interestingly. Now, the other thing that's very interesting is that we know that Biden is in line with China. We know China is basically flexing their muscles saying, listen, we have complete and utter control over Biden. And Biden allowed the balloon to fly across America because they said it was safe, even though there was explosives hooked to it, even though that they didn't understand, or maybe they did understand what they probably did, what this device was really doing, because why else would you allow it to go if you didn't know what it was doing? They probably knew it was doing and they couldn't do anything about it because they're controlled. But what's very interesting is that Bill Malugan put this out on Twitter and said, due to lack of funding and cost, the Biden admin is ending the use of most of Border Patrol's vital surveillance blimps at the southern border per CBP sources. Out of 12, I'm told most have already been grounded with only a handful still up in the RGV. Now that's interesting. They don't have the funding for that, but we can send billions and billions of dollars to Ukraine. Didn't we just send billions of dollars to Turkey and Syria? We can send it all over the place, but not to our own borders. Does that make any sense? Sean Davis responded to this and said, Biden let the communist Chinese float a spy balloon across the entire continental U.S., but the American surveillance balloons policing the border. He's apparently nuking those. I mean, are, is everyone seeing what's happening here? I think it's very, very clear what's going on. And what's very interesting is that we've come to find out that the Chinese military was behind the huge aerial spy program that has targeted more than 40 countries on five continents with high altitude surveillance balloons, similar to the one that it, the, that Biden allowed to fly across the United States and finally shot it down when it, was, when it finished its mission. That's really what they did. But we come to find out that this balloon, well, it was monitoring communications. So this balloon was, was equipped with antennas, solar panels large enough to produce power to operate multiple active intelligence collection sensors it also had western parts western language which is english so were they using our technology against us who gave this to them oh i remember hillary clinton having a server in her house and the chinese has complete and other access and we know that biden hunter biden and many other corrupt individuals they've been working with china so how much do they know they know quite a bit and we can see that they're using our technology against us. And you really need to think about why they were doing this. First, they were showing that they have complete and utter control over Biden. Second, they were monitoring communications. They flew over missile silo silos. We also know that they were testing a balloon that was going to carry high velocity missiles that could fly at high altitude, just drop them and actually hit targets on the ground. And we also know that Trump said, hey, China's gonna be invading Taiwan. So yes, there are multiple agendas with this and we can see that Biden is completely controlled and they can see that Biden will not do anything. He will follow orders from the Chinese and he will not do anything in Taiwan. Really think about this for a sec. It's absolutely unbelievable. And just yesterday we learned that the Biden administration was behind blowing up the Nord Stream pipelines because they didn't want Europe dependent on Russia. They didn't want Russia to have this control. They were trying to push the Green New Deal and they were trying to push a war because this is an act of war when you do something like this. And now it is out in the open and people are starting to learn and understand what is really going on here. Now, Matt Gates, he did something very interesting. He's introducing a resolution that will call on the Biden White House to end military and financial aid to Ukraine. The resolution will also urge all nations involved with the ongoing war to search for a peace deal between Ukraine and Russia. And Gates, he has 10 co-sponsors and they're calling the U.S. to end military and financial aid to Ukraine. What happens when the money is cut off to Ukraine? What happens when Zelensky, the neo-Nazis, they're not receiving any money there? Are there going to be problems? Yes, I do believe so. And 
I do believe we're heading down this path, which means the deep state. Okay, so this one is called Do It Yourself Kangaroo Courts Number 22, Trial by Jury. So we're going to talk about trial by jury. I know I got my sound working. Everything's looking good. And um, so, um, yeah. So first of all, I'm not a liar. Well, I meant a lawyer. No, I meant a liar. You should never take my word for anything. You should always do your own research. I provided references to aid you in your research, but I don't know everything, and I'm open to any ideas. There's four types of people you'll meet in your life. There's the people who try to wake up the slaves. There's the slave masters. There's the people who have no idea they're slaves. And there's the people who like being slaves. Which one of you do you really know for sure? Are you who you think you are? If you can see through the illusion, then you are the solution. If the people do not know their basic rights and freedoms, how can they know when or if their rights and freedoms are being infringed? How on earth can they possibly know? Never forget the men who started this country were marijuana-growing, whiskey-drinking, tax-evading rebels who left their beds at night to shoot at the pigs. George Washington was a hemp farmer. All tyranny needs to gain a foothold is for people of good conscience to remain silent. I don't trust the government. I don't trust the medical, pharmaceutical, industrial complex. I don't trust the military industrial complex. I don't trust the mainstream media. I don't trust the bankster criminal cabal that owns the government, owns the medical pharmaceutical industrial complex, owns the military industrial complex, and owns the mainstream media. And if you call me a conspiracy theorist, I don't trust you. Government is not reason, it's not eloquence, it is force. Like fire, it's a dangerous servant and a fearful master. This is actually the, the fourth time that I've tried to start this presentation. I was having trouble with the um, sound, um, and I wound up buying a mic, external mic, and doing troubleshooting on the software and rebooting my computer a bunch of times. And, you know, finally I got it fixed, and I think it's fixed, and it's working pretty good right now, I think. I went and tested it on some other software, made some videos, some short videos that were tests, and it was sounding pretty good. So this is taken from the Cause of Necessities for Taking Up Arms, 1775. Statutes have been passed to extend courts of admiralty and vice admiralty far beyond their ancient limits for depriving us of the custom and estimable privilege of trial by jury in cases affecting both life and property to supersede the course of common law and instead thereof to publish and order the use and exercise of the law martial. That's martial law, military dictatorship, and for altering fundamentally the form of government established by charter we saw the misery to which such despotism, that's dictatorship, would reduce us. So that's, this is why the War of Independence, this is why they took up arms, because they were being denied trial by jury. Okay, now a trial by jury is not a jury trial. When you go into these so-called courts, they're all martial law courts, and they'll tell you, well, we can give you a jury trial and if you don't object you just caved into it okay so you got to tell them well it, that's not a trial by jury and a trial by jury the jury conducts the trial not the judge the jury calls the witnesses the jury questions the witnesses the jury determines the law in the matter and the jury determines the facts in the matter and the jury pronounces sentence and a trial by jury is not subject to appeal 
That's trial by jury. It's not a jury trial. A jury trial is a kangaroo court. It's a show trial. It's 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 a scam that the, these bought and paid for clerks try and get you to do. Um, so you have to remind them that they have an oath of office too. Trial by jury is not a jury trial. Seventh Amendment. The right of trial by jury shall be preserved. Okay, so that's in the Seventh Amendment. Article 3, Section 2, Clause 3. The trial of all crimes shall be by jury. Constitution for the United States of America, Article 3, Section 2, Clause 3. This is not, it's everywhere. The, tape, the founding fathers knew the threats. They had just gone through it all. My book is now available, Trump, A True American Patriot or Not. Um, Mike Blackwell, he's a co-author, but he actually, he actually asked me to write the book. And it took me about six weeks to write the book because all I did is I took a lawsuit and turned it into the book. So 99% of the book is provable facts. And so, um, uh, but he had to babysit me through the process of getting it ready to publish as a book. And that took about six months. And so that's why I put him on there because, you know, he helped me. He published the book. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that he got his money back for publishing the book. This is actually on the back of the book. And um, this is not written by me or Mike, but the company that hired us to do it wrote this. Uh, or no, that we hired to help us publish this book wrote this, and I think they nailed it. It says, um, let me get in there a little closer. Well, let's try this. Yeah. It says, and Trump, a true American patient or not, Glenn Fern and Mike Blackwell, um... Show the depths of, it's kind of hard to read because I'm, I'm standing back from it away to keep by this microphone. Show the depths of corruption, deceit, and manipulation infesting our political system for hundreds of years, regardless of political affiliation. Read the hard evidence that exposes how our elected officials sold Americans into slavery. Understand the Founding Fathers' true intent when they formed our Republican form of government. Discover the influence of the satanic Roman cult on our political system and poli uh, on our politicians and political system. Does Donald Trump want to transfer power back to we the people? In Trump, you'll see the great battle that is upon us. And I think they nailed it there. So you can order the book from Amazon.com or from my website. Uh, it's $40 plus shipping. Uh, I prefer you order the book my website. Amazon does not provide autograph books. If you want the book autographed, order the book my website. And if you have something you want the autograph to say, then you got to tell me. Do you want to know the origins of the deep state and who's behind it? It's in the book. Do you want to know why it's called the Trump administration or the Biden administration? It's in the book. Do you want to know what an administration is? Do you want to know how Trump came to be president? It's in the book. Do you want to know who owns Congress? Yes, Congress is owned and operated. Why do you think Pelosi will get up there and say, we can't read this bill until after we pass it? Why do you think that is? That's because the owners are telling her what to do. Do you want to know why they're called law enforcement officers? Maybe it's because they're enforcing the martial law, huh? Do you want to know how you have become a slave? You know, only slaves use IOUs for money. It's fake money. Matter of fact, 
If you use Federal Reserve notes, it's all you got is Federal Reserve notes in your wallet, you have a bill of credit. Federal Reserve notes are bills of credit drawn on the privately held uh, Federal Reserve Bank, bills of United States credit. So anything you buy with United States credit, who do you think owns it? And so then you're a pauper, and you're living at government expense. That's exactly what you're doing. Isn't that maybe how you become a slave? Do you want to know what the root cause of the War of Independence was? It's in the book. Do you want to know why every president goes to visit the Pope on their first international trip? Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that? Every president on their first international trip, they go to see the pimp. Well, I meant the Pope. No, I meant the pimp. So, um, well, I told you about Mike Blackwell. I don't know how many of you have heard of Jerome Corsi. He's a, a guy that uh, lives up in the Northeast. He's got a YouTube channel. He's got a website. He's written a bunch of books. He's got a Ph.D. in political science from Harvard University. Anyways, there's a YouTube video with him where he talks about how in 2015, five generals came to see him, and they said they were going to overthrow Obama. And he said, well, you can do that if you want, but you might want to go talk to Donald Trump first. Three months later, he gets a phone call. They decided not to overthrow Obama because Donald Trump had agreed to run for president. And I already talked about the 95% provable facts, some opinion, some of it's opinion. There's no doubt about it. So far, we've just been talking about provable facts. But there is some opinion, like about Howard Hughes. Matter of fact, um... In the book, I talk about Howard Hughes a little bit, and I think that the reason he was hiding out is because all these billionaires, when they get to be billionaires, get approached by the New World Order crowd, and they get told you're going to go along with our program. Okay, that's my opinion. But, um, and I think that's why Howard Hughes was hiding out all the time. Um, and I think that Donald Trump was approached too, and he got told to go along with their program, and he thumbed his nose at him. And again, that's my opinion. But... We do know that there was a helicopter crash in 1984. And I've been working on airplanes all my life, okay? I started out working on helicopters in 1976. And so, um, and I do aerospace engineering consulting. So, I happen to know a little bit about helicopters. And I know that they crash for a lot of reasons. But they never, I've never ever heard of a helicopter crashing for the reason that this helicopter crashed. It crashed because the blades came off. <laughs> the blades don't come off of helicopters, not unless they get shot off or something. But um, but the blades came off. This was a helicopter that was in, like, New York or New Jersey or someplace. There was three of Trump's executives on there, and they all got killed. And Trump was supposed to have been on there, and he canceled out at the last minute. So I think that that was a little something telling Trump that you better go along with our program or you're going to turn up dead. You know, when Trump went to uh, was president, he hired his own private security. And then David Wilcock. I don't know how many of you have heard of David Wilcock. He's a pretty brilliant guy. He claims that he might be the reincarnated, um, oh, what's his name? J. Edgar Casey, Or just Edgar Casey. Um, anyways, there's a YouTube video where he talks about that too. And he says that the um, that Howard Hughes, after World War II, I mean, everybody knows that Howard Hughes was a billionaire. He had airplane factories. He was doing all sorts. had all these defense contracts. Anyways, he, he built a spruce goose that's still sitting in the Long Beach Harbor today. Uh, anyways, he um, uh, got blackballed after World War II, and he couldn't understand why. So he hired some young ladies to go and sleep with these deep state types and find out from Pillow Talk what's going on. And that's when he found out that they're planning on doing what they're doing today. They're going to kill a bunch of us off, 90% of us, and they're going to enslave the rest of us and all the rest of that stuff. And so he went and had a, he had a set of manuals. And, and there was a bunch of manuals that he had set up 
and and uh, Kennedy was following the procedures. That's why they killed him because he circulated six billion dollars worth of U.S. Treasury notes. He was telling the bankster thieves, "You're done here." And so they killed him, and it was real flagrant and real obvious. And and so I think now, after knowing all that, I think that probably the reason he was hiding out is, I mean, it'd be simple for them to get a hold of those books, and and uh, and know who made them, and and so then they would be. That's why Howard Hughes was hiding out because he figured he was next. You know, during that time period, uh, Jack Kennedy, Bobby Kennedy were both killed. Uh, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X. There was a bunch of people that were assassinated during that time period. So anyways, in reality, they're not after me. They're after you. I'm just in the way. So this is the Northwest Ordinance. Trial by juries in the Northwest Ordinance, too. This is Article 2 of the Northwest Ordinance. It says the inhabitants of said territory shall always be entitled to the benefits of writ of habeas corpus and of trial by jury. Judicial uh, proceedings according to the course of common law. Um, there's a bunch of things in here. Um, I don't really want to go into it all because um, it's not talking about what the issue that I want to present right now because the issue that I want to present right now is trial by jury. Most people have no idea, and then they let the judge walk all over them when they say, well, we're going to give you a jury trial. Well, you tell them I want a trial by jury, and that's not a jury trial. And the, the reason the Northwest Ordinance is significant is that the um, Definitive Treaty of Peace of 1783 gave Congress a huge tract of land to fail to be in any of the other states. Now, if you go to the U.S. Department of Justice website, you'll see that it'll tell you that there's four founding documents. There's the Declaration of Independence. There's the... Um, Articles of Confederation, there's the Northwest Ordinance, and there's the Constitution. And the Northwest Ordinance is important because the uh, under the Definitive Treaty of Peace of 1783, King George gave the government, the federal government, okay, a huge tract of territory that was not in any of the states at the time. And so... They had to pass this Northwest Ordinance, and the reason that's significant is that defines the nature of federal jurisdiction in federal territory. And so um, federal territory can include also territory under a military occupation. And so it was a huge tract of territory. It went all the way. It was everything east of the Mississippi River and north of the Ohio River. And so... I mean, that's like about 10 states in there right now. So, and then what you have to do is remind that bail priest on the bench, so-called judge, that he's got an oath of office. And under Article 6, Clause 2 of the Constitution says that this Constitution and the laws of the United States which shall be made in pursuance thereof and all treaties which are... Um, treaties made which shall be made or which shall be made under authority of the United States shall be the supreme law of the land notwithstanding or anything and the judges in every state shall be bound thereby anything in the Constitution and laws of any state to the contrary notwithstanding so I don't care what your state statutes say I require a trial by jury that's about the time they dismiss it Okay, or find some other reason to drop it. Okay, there's a guy that I know that uh, Charlie Danielson that he'll go in and he's not a lawyer and he'll go in and represent people and that's what he does is he insists on a trial by jury and he says the War of Independence was fought over trial by jury. We want a trial by jury, <laughs> and it's not a jury trial. And every time they find some reason to drop it. All judges have an oath as the supreme law of the land. Notwithstanding anything in any state statutes or constitution. So I don't care what your state statutes or constitution say. Your oath is to the supreme law of the land. Commerce. 
means commerce among the several states or with foreign nations or in any territory of the United States or in the District of Columbia uh, or between any such territory and another or between any such territory and any state or foreign nation or between the District of Columbia and any state or territory or foreign nation. So so there's, there's where if you're under a military occupation, then that's territorial. You're under a territory. This is Downs versus Bidwell. This case has so many jewels in it. it. Says eliminating then from the opinions of this court all expressions unnecessary to the disposition of the particular case and gleaning therefrom the exact point decided in each, the following propositions may be considered as established. Number one. That the District of Columbia and the territories are not states within the judicial clause of the Constitution giving jurisdiction of, in cases between citizens of different states. So District of Columbia and the territories are don't have access to Article 3. And they actually say that further on. The territories are not states within the meaning of revised statute 709 permitting writs of error from this court. Okay. So... That's why, and shortly after this, that they started insisting on petitions for writ of certiorari to the Supreme Court. And so, but there's actually a case, um, Brown versus Texas, that was appealed from the El Paso County Court at Law to the Supreme Court. And they, they went directly, it says right in the case that this is appealed from the El Paso County Court at Law. And the Supreme Court answered it. And so the point being is that it doesn't say whether they did a writ of error, but I think they did a writ of error and a petition for a writ of error. And so, so you cannot do petitions for writs of error from territory if you're from, like, uh, for example, from the U.S. District Court. Well, that's territorial, and so and I've done I've done petitions for writs of certiorari five times, and I've been there five times. Now, well, the last one I did, or no, it was the second from the last one I did. I tried to do a petition for writ of error, and the clerk said I couldn't do it. They wanted me to do a petition for writ of certiorari, and so so that's what I wound up having to do. So. Um, I think that if you did it from a state court and appeal directly to the Supreme Court and under a writ of error, I'll bet you they'll answer it. But I can't say for sure because I haven't done it. That the District of Columbia and the territories are states as the word is used in treaties with foreign powers. So if you look in the definitions, uh, for example, in Title Eight, I think that's customs. It's either customs or immigration. I'm not sure. But if you look in the definition section, it'll say that uh, this applies in the United States and the states. And then it'll say, and it'll list them. It'll say Guam, America, and small Puerto Rico. Okay, the territories, it'll list them. And they're states under, that's, they're under international law. And so people that don't understand the law think that when it's talking about the states, in that case, it's talking about the 50 states. But it's not. It's talking about the territories. Customs and immigration doesn't have a shred of authority in Texas or in any of the states, okay, just in the territories or the District of Columbia. And, um, um, and like, if you go for, like, in the um, um, Title 39, I think it's 39, that's the post office, and but that's where they do the post roads, Okay, and the post roads are in the Constitution. They're in, in all of the documents. They talk about post roads all over the place. And so um, so they are legitimately in the 50 states. And if you look in Title 39, it'll say, it'll list it in the definitions. It'll say the United States and the states and the 50 states. It'll say the 50 states. And then it'll say the territories. But so the point being is that, they wait, that when they want to say the 50 states, that's what they say. So the territories are states as used in trees with foreign powers. 
And the territories are not within the Constitution providing for the Supreme Court. Okay, again, Article 3. And, and so that's why in, and I think what happened, I have no proof, my opinion, is that, see, this case was argued in January of 1901, and, um, and the, 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 the judgment was released in May or June, I think it was June of 1901, and in March of 1901, they came out with the D.C. Code. And the D.C. Code sets up a Supreme Court of the District of Columbia. And so Roberts, John Roberts, wears two hats. He's the Supreme Court of the United States, and he's also the Supreme Court of the District of Columbia. But they had gone and they call it all United States. So people don't know what the heck they're dealing with. it. But it's determined by the pleadings, by what you say in the with the issues being presented and and that will determine which hat he's wearing whether it's the supreme court of the united states or the supreme court of the district of columbia so this is national mutual insurance company of the district of columbia versus tidewater transfer company it's the u.s supreme court 1948 we therefore decline to overrule the opinion of chief justice marshall we hold that the district of, is not a state within article three um, in other words, in cases between citizens of the district and of the states were not included in a catalog of controversies over which Congress could give jurisdiction to the federal courts by virtue of Article 3. So the, the federal courts are actually under Article 4. Article 4, Clause 3, uh, which is other property of the United States. Anyways... In other words, Congress has exclusive legislative jurisdiction over citizens of Washington District of Columbia and through their plenary power, that's military dictatorship, folks, nationally covers those citizens even when in one of the several states of the Union as though the district expands for the purpose of regulating its citizens wherever they go throughout the states of the Union. Now, I don't know how many of you remember the Kavanaugh hearings, okay, when Kavanaugh was... Um, uh, had been uh, appointed um, or, or, or um, nominated by Trump to be on the Supreme Court. And um, who was it? Lindsey Graham asked him, would a U.S. citizen in Afghanistan, would, uh, would the United States have jurisdiction over a U.S. citizen in Afghanistan? And Kavanaugh said yes. Okay. So it's, it's wherever they go throughout the states of the Union, it's actually wherever they go anywhere. My uh, blog is sovereigntyinternational.wordpress.com. My website is sovereigntyinternational.fyi. My email address is engineerwin at yahoo.com. My YouTube profile is Sovereign Living. My YouTube, uh, YouTube wants to be sued. They've taken my channel down twice. Um, my new uploads are going on Rumble. Matter of fact, I'm doing live streams because Rumble's really hard to upload files to, so I'll just do them live streams, and that works pretty good. Um, so, um, so yeah, I, I'm going to do a, a video on YouTube here before too long. That's one of my ones I want to do. Matter of fact, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be uh, doing live streams here probably every week. I'll, and I'll try and do them on Thursday. I want to get them regular. Trial by jury. I'm looking at some of the comments now. I got Jeff Speed there. Trial by jury can be in any court. Okay, you're entitled to trial by jury, and all judges have an oath to the supreme law of the land. So trial by jury is not just in federal court. It's state court or federal court, and you can demand a trial by jury. That means the jury conducts the trial. That's not six people, too, by the way. Six people, that's these admiralty hearings that are kangaroo courts, and, and that's, not, that's not trial by jury. It's not initiated by a grand jury. The judge is supposed to. Actually, they don't. If, if you stand your ground and insist on it, they'll, uh, every time that I've seen so far, uh, they drop it. Okay, the case gets dropped for some reason. It's not, it's not anything to do with the grand jury. Grand jury is separate. 
Grand jury is between 12 and 26 people. And a grand jury works on majority vote, uh, where there's an indictment. And all an indictment says is that there's probable cause that a crime exists. And so then it still has to go to a regular trial. Um, that's all a grand jury does is just say that there's probable cause. The uh, trial by jury, with a, with, in a trial, trial by jury, the jury calls the witnesses, the jury questions the witnesses. Actually, if the grand jury is doing its job, it should operate the same way. <laughs> but anyways, um, so and Donna Sumset is correct. Okay, so, back to the presentation. Facebook community page uh, has been uh, uh, deleted. My private group called Sovereignty International is being deleted. I haven't been to Facebook in months. I have no interest in going there. All they do is censor you. So, I, I've got, I, you know, but I'd really like to delete everybody off of that Sovereignty International uh, group because if, if I go and... And, and leave it, then somebody else will get it, and, and Facebook can still benefit from it. And I want to make sure they're not benefiting from my hard work. I'd, I want to delete everybody off of there, ban them, actually, ban them off of there so they can't come back, and then, then they can go join in other groups. I don't give a shit, but at least there's, and then once it's banned, once everybody's off it, then I can easily delete the group, and then, and then once I've, I've got, uh, I can delete my profile. And so, but I, you know, that would take me a heck of a long time to do that, and it's too much hassle, and so um, I'm not interested in going on Facebook, quite frankly. Um, my, I have a, 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 um, a group, a private group on freelist.org called Administering Your Public Servants, and I've got a Google private group called Administering Your Public Servants. I used to have one on Yahoo. Yahoo deleted all of their groups and all of their files, so... Now I have I have it those those one on free lists. I migrated everybody from Yahoo over to free lists, and and also that the one on Google's always been there. Matter of fact, the Google group was my first one that I ever set up was Google. Um, and follow me on Rumble, Sovereignty International, and then Patreon. And I I definitely appreciate all my Patreons. Um, uh, see the problem with Patreon is they're they forced me to go through PayPal. And, and I'm having to file criminal complaints against PayPal because PayPal is withholding it. They want tax information. It's none of their business. That's war crimes. So I'm going to file some criminal complaints against PayPal, against the board of directors of PayPal, because that's who's responsible for everything that PayPal does. So, um, so I have been doing as little as possible through PayPal. Matter of fact, people send me donations through PayPal. I refund them and tell them to send it to me another way. Um, the only one that I can't do right now is Patreon because Patreon doesn't have another way of doing their payments. And so um, I'm kind of stuck. If I, there was another way, that would be great. International law rule. This is taken from jurisdiction over federal areas within the states. Report of the Interdepartmental uh, Committee for the Study of Jurisdiction over Federal Areas Within the States, Part 2, a text of the Law of Legislative Jurisdiction submitted to the Attorney General and transmitted to the President, June 1957. And this is taken from pages 158 through 165. Now, this is easily searchable. You can, you can search for this book online. And, and there's actually a part one and a part two. One's about 600 pages and the other one's about 400 pages. So they're easily, you can search for them and get them online, get your own copy. Uh, international law rule adopted for areas under federal legislative jurisdiction. Federalizes state civil law, including common law. This rule serves to federalize not only statutory, but the common law of a state. State and federal venue discussed. See, the problem is, is everybody's under martial law. And so then it's all federal. It really is. It's all federal. Um, the civil law is effective in an area of exclusive federal jurisdiction or federal law notwithstanding their derivation from state laws. And a cause arising under such laws may be brought in or removed to federal district court under 
what's now 1331 and section 1441 of Title 28 U.S. Code giving jurisdiction to such courts and civil actions arising under the laws of the United States. So, um, and a good example of that was when I, um, something happened here. I guess nothing. I filed a lawsuit against uh, Navajo County in Arizona, and I filed it in state court over property taxes. And I included the attorney general, and the attorney general removed it into federal court, okay, because property taxes are federal. Matter of fact, they started with an, a Congress Act, Act of Congress in 1861. And so um, they're federal. So are uh, the state sales taxes are all federal too, and so, um, and and so it went, it went to the federal court in in Phoenix, and they dismissed it, and so then I appealed it, and it went to the court of appeals in the Ninth Circuit in California, and they dismissed it, um, and I didn't take it to the Supreme Court, uh, but I never ever heard. Because under martial law, under the Geneva Convention, they have to fix the problem, okay? And so they fixed it, and I never had any more trouble. This is another Downs versus Bidwell. Um, fifth. This is another fifth, by the way. <laughs> you got to read the case. Anyways, fifth, the Constitution has undoubtedly conferred upon Congress the right to create such municipal organizations as deem best for the territories of the United States. So you have to understand, all municipal corporations are territorial. Okay? So if you're being assaulted by the city cops, that's territorial. You have to understand that. And so that's where you file, start filing criminal complaints for perjury of oath, violating Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17, um, and there's a whole bunch of reasons why you just you just start dumping on them, okay? If you're in one of the 50 states, okay? If you're in a territory, well, then you're stuck. But if you're in one of the 50 states, which most of us are. This is Article 4, Section 2. The Congress shall have power to dispose of and make all needful rules and regulations respecting the territory or other property belonging to the United States. That's all of the federal courts operate under that. And regulations, if it's a corporation, it's owned by the government. And this is not just the United States, okay? This is everywhere. And, and this are actually Canadian court cases, the Canadian Ownership and Control Determination Act, owned, being subject to the regulations. If you're subject to the regulations, you're owned by the government. That's why when you incorporate, you incorporate into the government, <laughs> That's what you do. That's that's exactly what incorporation is. And then Section 3 of the Government Corporation Operation Act of Canada, every corporation for all its purposes is an agent of the bitch. Well, now it's the son of a bitch, I guess. Eh? <laughs> the bitch kicked the bucket, so now it's the son of a bitch. Martial law is the public law of necessity. Necessity calls its forth. Necessity justifies its exercise. Necessity measures the extent and degree to which it may be employed. That necessity is no formal artificial legalistic concept, but an actual, factual one. It is the necessity of taking action to safeguard the state against insurrection, riot, disorder, or public calamity. What constitutes necessity is a question of fact in each case. And that's... Um, taken from Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition. Necessity is the plea of every infringement of human freedom. It is the argument of tyrants. It is the creed of slaves. Okay, so, oh, they have to do it. That's necessity. Well, you're a slave if you want to make that kind of argument. Okay, enjoy your slavery. Have fun and knock yourself out. That's William Pitt the Younger in a speech to the House of Commons, November 18, 1783. It's nothing new. This is always the Roman Empire was under martial law. 
The action of Congress and passage of the First Legal Tender Act was placed upon the ground of the existing imperative need of government, and the Legal Tender Clause was urged and adopted as a war measure. Well, gee, that sounds like martial law. That's Juilliard versus Greenman, 1884, U.S. Supreme Court. No state shall coin money, emit bills of credit, make anything but gold or silver coin, a tender in the payment of debts. That's U.S. Constitution, Article 1, Section 10, Clause 1. There is no lawful money in general circulation. They can't accept gold or silver coin and because it's not in general circulation. And so that's, that's, that's our out. Okay, you start filing criminal complaints against them because they're forcing Federal Reserve notes. Federal Reserve notes under the Gold Reserve Act of 1934 and under Title 12, United States Code, Section 411, are not authorized for anybody but the banks. Governments descend to the level of a mere private corporation and take, take on the characteristics of a mere private citizen where private corporate commercial paper, Federal Reserve notes, and securities checks is concerned. For purposes of suits, such corporations and individuals are regarded as entities entirely separate from government. So international law means they're not sovereign, okay? They walk away. They waive their immunity. When they go and bring out, I demand some Federal Reserve notes. Oh, you just waived your immunity. Governments lose their immunity and descend to the level of a private corporation when involved in commercial activity enforcing negotiable instruments such as fines, penalties, assessments, bails, taxes. The remedy lies in the hands of the state and its principality seeking remedy. And this is taken from the non-ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge A.H. Ellett of the Utah Supreme Court in the case Diet versus Turner. Congress, claiming its martial law power to declare war, suppress insurrections, and repel invasions, imposed martial law in the United States and never discontinued it. The result was an extension of military municipal jurisdiction of Congress. But where is the evidence of this? Look at the 13th Amendment, the Civil Rights Act, the Legal Tender Laws, the 14th Amendment, etc., etc., etc. That's why they're not giving you a trial by jury. Because they can't. That's why if you insist on it and you stand your ground, they'll find some way to get rid of it. The case. The 14th Amendment is an extension of national military powers presently used in a municipal character and enforced by martial laws, stretched far beyond their original limitations and enforced by Article I tribunals. There's no Article III courts. The Supreme Court is the only court that might, might operate as an Article III court. Otherwise, there aren't any. Unless... We, the people, get off our backside and start convening our common law juries. That's taken from the non-ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge A.H. Ellard of the Utah Supreme Court in the case Diet versus Turner. 1968. The refusal of King George III to allow the colonies to operate an honest money system which freed the ordinary man from the clutches of the money manipulators was probably the prime cause of the revolution. Oh, you mean the fake money? What about Cash App? You can, uh, actually, there's a dollar sign next to the message thing there. You can send me, uh, um, I don't know, what do they call them? Um, on, on YouTube, they have a name for it. Pointers on domicile versus residence. Yeah. Well, yeah, you don't want a residence as commercial. You want to be domicile. As a matter of fact, I don't even go there. I'm an inhabitant. I live on the land, on the soil. I like... You know, I don't agree with Anna von Reitz in a lot of things, but that's one thing that I like is I say I'm a I'm an inhabitant of the soil, and um, you know that kind of thing. Um, you can do Cash App, uh, Glenn Winningham. Um, I think I have an email. You'd have to send me an email, and I can send you the Cash App. Uh, but it's uh, I think it's um, Dollar Glenn Winningham. Uh, I think I think I'll have to let me check.
Yeah, yeah. It's Dollar Glenn Winningham, G L E N N W I N N I N G H A M. Kind of like losing ham except winning ham. And it's all one word Dollar Glenn Winningham. If you if you give me your name, I'll I'll send you a request. Anyways, back to the back to the show, folks. The United States shall guarantee every state of this union a Republican form of government. Yeah, well, um, they're all territorial, so that's definitely not Republican. They're under martial law. Um, Got to complain. That's why they never, ever, ever follow their own rules, their own codes. They never do anything they're required to do. And that's why I don't even go into their court unless they're dragging me in there. And I just start sending out hundreds of criminal complaints for felonies that they're involved in because they're not following their own codes. Dred Scott versus Sanford, a republic is not the law of nations. Okay, law of nations is international law. Law of nations, all statutes are international law. Okay, UNIDRA, Uniform Commercial Code. That's why I never talk about that. Okay, because that's Unidroid. That's private international law. That's not a republic. You're not, if you make those arguments, everything is in the words you use. There's there's guys that I know of. There was a guy that wanted my help. He got charged. He had a handgun. He was walking down the street with it. It wasn't concealed. They arrested him. New Jersey has really draconian laws about that stuff. And and uh, he was in New Jersey. And, um, and I told him, make an affidavit and tell him that it's an arm, it's not a gun, it's not a firearm, it's not a weapon, it's an arm, and you have the right to keep and bear arms. And he did that and stood his ground, and all of a sudden the whole thing disappeared. But in considering the question before us, it must be borne in mind that there is no law of nations standing between the people of the United States and their government, okay? That's the purpose of the government. It's supposed to operate as a buffer between we the people and international law and interfering in the relation to each other. The powers of the government and the rights of the citizens under it are positive practical regulations plainly written down. The people of the United States have delegated to, to it certain enumerated powers and forbidden it to exercise others. U.S. Supreme Court. The purpose of a Republican form of government is to shield we the people from international law. Copies of these documents can be found on my website and linked under my recent YouTube videos. My recent videos, like not YouTube. I'm, I'm not uploading any videos to YouTube. I'm going to sue their butt off for about $50 million here one of these days when I get some other stuff taken care of. For a complete set of YouTube videos with private information, shares a DVD with over 50 searchable law dictionaries and other books and forms, contact me privately at engineerwin at yahoo.com. Donations to support this work are appreciated. I prefer gold or silver coin, but as an extremely less desirable alternative, I can accept the IOUs, the military script, the forced loans, the fake money, the Federal Reserve notes, the PayPal gifts, the checks, the money orders. Send me an email for particulars. You know, and, and the reason I put that in there is because there's a Supreme Court case called U.S. versus Carlisle from 1873, and where the Supreme Court said everyone and everything not privileged is sovereign. And so using Federal Reserve notes, it's impossible to pay anything with a Federal Reserve note because they're debts. You can't pay a debt with a debt. So, so what you do is you discharge debt with limited liability. That's a privilege. It's only a privilege, though, as long as you want to do it. If you're doing it because you have to, because nobody else has lawful money, well, then it's not a privilege anymore. And they can't, can't call it a privilege. Two national governments exist, one to be maintained under the Constitution with all its restrictions, the other to be maintained by Congress outside and independently of that instrument. And this is, that's Down versus Bidwell again. That case has just got some jewels in it. And that's dissenting opinion of Justice Marshall Harlan, Downs versus Bidwell, 1901. And it's true. Get a load of this. 
Article 1, Articles of Confederation. The style of this confederacy shall be the United States of America. And what does that passport say? It says United States of America. Everywhere you look, it'll say United States of America. The only place that I found the United States of America, we'll see it here in a second. A uh, passport defined. A passport is a written document given to person or persons by commander of belligerent forces authorizing him or them to travel unmolested within the district occupied by his troops. You think that all these military police are military troops? They sure as heck are. Passports are issued by the State Department or other similar office in other countries to diplomatic agents and others entering or traveling in foreign countries which are the same general character as those issued during war. The latter, when practical, should have a photo of the bearer attached. And that's the Rules of Land Warfare, 1914 edition, Passport Safe Conduct, Safeguards and Cartels, Chapter 7, Section 4, Article 276, page 100. Oh, and look at that, a Federal Reserve note. And look at that, the United States of America. Actually, that's a silver certificate, but it doesn't matter. Even the Federal Reserve notes say that. That is the only place that I have been able to find the United States of America. Oh, also one other place on land patents. Okay, they have them on land patents too. The United States of America. At common law, only gold or silver are legal tender. If you want common law, it requires honest measures. Okay, if you don't have honest money, then you're not going to get an honest court. Okay, there are going to be thieves and pirates. And that's why people wonder what's going on. And that's exactly what's going on. There's a distinction between a debt discharged and one paid. When discharged, the debt still exists, though divested of its character as a legal obligation during the operation of the discharge. <laughs> These scumbag bar members lay awake at night dreaming this stuff up. Discharge falls under the Uniform Commercial Code. International law. Check out my other videos. Bankster Thieves playlist, Roman Call playlist. These are actually YouTube playlists. Um, bankrupt corporate so-called governments, bar members one through seven. It's actually, yeah, it's one through seven. I think it's got a few more now. Uh, do it yourself. How not to volunteer for the selective service in the draft. Martial laws here. Do it yourself. No income tax. Do it yourself. Free mail. Do it yourself. Kangaroo courts one through. Actually, it's uh, twenty-two now. And then there's the Canada Border Pigs playlist, bar members, and there's the Tannic Connections playlist. This is General Orders 100, Article 37, also known as the Lieber Code, written by Francis Lieber for Lincoln. Forced loans means a military dictatorship. This rule does not interfere with the right of the victorious invader to tax the people or their property to levy forced loans to billet soldiers or to appropriate property. Cryptocurrency is not a forced loan. Anything can be used in a medium of exchange as long as we agree to it. It's called barter. A central bank digital currency is a forced loan. Sad will be the day when the American people forget the traditions and their history and no longer remember that the country they love, the institutions they cherish, and the freedom they hope to preserve were born from the throes of armed resistance to tyranny and nursed in the rugged arms of fearless men. Well said. Roger Sherman, signer of the Declaration of Independence. Law of nations and international law are convertible phrases. Banks are international law. Military dictatorship is international law. Uniform commercial code, that's private international law. All codes, rules, and regulations are all international law. Forced loans is probably the single most important thing for a military dictatorship. It makes it so the courts presume that you do not pay a debt. Okay, you're a pauper. Makes everybody into paupers. Paupers have no rights except what they allow you to have. And it puts you living at expense of the government, okay? Because they're actually bills of credit. Federal Reserve notes are 
bills of United States credit drawn on the privately held Federal Reserve Bank. That's quite the scam. According to Norm Franz, and I think he's right, gold is the money of kings, silver is the money of gentlemen, barter is the money of peasants, debt is the money of slaves. Federal Reserve was set up under the insurance laws of the United States. Federal Reserve notes are a worthless insurance script. Anything purchased with worthless insurance script is the property of the issuer of the script. Taxes are the fee for the using the private money system. Federal Reserve notes are bills of United States credit issued by the privately held Federal Reserve Bank. If you buy something with United States credit, who owns it? United States does. The single most important requirement for a Republican form of government is lawful money. And we the people are asleep at the wheel. Although we're waking up in droves right now. We'll see how long that lasts. Lawful money is not Federal Reserve notes. Lawful money is not bank notes. Lawful money is not forced loans. Lawful money is not discharged debts. Lawful money is not international law. And lawful money is not Federal Reserve notes. Resistance to tyrants is obedience to God. That was actually Jefferson's seal said that. Resistance to tyrants is obedience to God. Therefore, non-resistance to tyrants is obedience to Satan. Choose ye day, this day whom ye will serve. A trial by jury can defeat all of this. A military dictatorship is incapable of providing a trial by jury. Their codes provide for a jury trial only because they're all courts of equity and admiralty operating under civil law. So they'll find a reason why they just need to drop this matter. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel or this Rumble channel. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. <laughs> Twitter took my channel down too. Don't forget to follow me on Steam at Sovereignty International. Don't forget to like this video. On YouTube, don't forget to click the bell next to the subscribe button. And on Rumble, don't forget to uh, rumble it, you know, which is like it effect effectively. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. On Steam it, don't forget to vote and make your comments. That's the front page of the YouTube channel. The subscribe button's already clicked. The bell isn't clicked because if it was clicked, then it would look like it's vibrating. What's proclaiming martial law is no law at all, but merely for the sake of public safety and in circumstances of great emergency, setting aside all law and acting under military power. And so that's that's what they do. Okay, it's it's no law. And that's why they have to pass literally millions of codes, rules, and regulations that at common law, common law is the unwritten law because it's you treat your neighbors how you want to be treated. Under martial law, they got to spell it all out, and they kind of conveniently forget to put a lot of stuff down there. All statutes are edicts under martial law. We can't even begin to count the number of times judges, lawyers, and statesmen have said there isn't any common law anymore. It's been replaced by statutes. They'd be more truthful if they said there isn't any common law anymore. It's been replaced by martial law. And that's, again, taken from the non-ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge A.H. Ella to the Utah Supreme Court in the case Diet versus Turner, 1968. There are no common law offenses against the United States, only those acts which Congress has forbidden uh, with penalties for disobedience of its command or crimes. Otherwise, there's no crimes. Same thing in Texas. Under Texas law, no act or omission is a crime unless made so by statute. The legislature may create an offense and the same enactment provide exceptions to its application. That means Texas is under military dictatorship. Of course, we already knew that. 
Under military dictatorship, there is no law, which is why they're required to pass statutes for common law crimes like murder and assault. This creates civil law, which creates a democracy. Under military dictatorship, you have a democracy. And that's all international law. I have exclusive content available on my website and on Patreon. My website has two subscription levels, and I accept cryptocurrencies. My basic subscription level is $49.99 a year for the videos only. My uh, platinum subscription level is $79.99 a year for the videos plus unlimited email consultations. But I'm not a liar. Well, I'm in a lawyer. No, I'm in a liar. But I can tell you what I would do under the uh, circumstances and where to find the forums. Uh, the only power that these New World Order Satanists have over us is through fraud and deception, and my agenda is to expose it for all our benefit. But I cannot fight all the battles. I need more people doing it. Some of my exclusive content is uh, Arlington Private Information Share. That's seven videos. Land deed training. That's at least a couple videos. Uh, stop all certificates training, foreclosure estoppel certificates training, uh, uh, corporate denial training, toll roads notice and demand training, invoice training, notice of void judgment training, revocation signature training, third party witness training, and federal habeas corpus training. Uh, revocation of voter registration, criminal complaint training. Lawsuit training, I got one video on that, and I probably need to get some more. Other training requests, if it's something that I haven't done, uh, I'll look at it. Northeast private information share videos, all forms, files, and other instructions are available free. Linked on my videos and on my website. All exclusive content will be on my website, and you can buy a subscription there. And my Patreon is Sovereignty International. They've been telling people for decades that we're in a democracy. Do you think that's an accident? This is George III, Chapter 12, 1778, two years after the Declaration of Independence. Two years. Whereas taxation by the Parliament of Great Britain for the purpose of raising a revenue in His Majesty's colonies, provinces, and plantation in North America has been found by experience to occasion great uneasiness and disorders. Well, no shit, Batman. That from and after the passing of this act, the king and parliament of Great Britain will not impose any duty, tax, or assessment, whatever, payable on any of the colonies, provinces, or plantations in North America or the West Indies, except only such duties as may be expedient to impose the regulation of commerce. So then what he did is he gave, this is 1778, right? 1867, Canada was independent. All these other uh, uh, states were independent. And so then they could go ahead and, and, and do the same shit again. And they did. And they're still doing it to this day. Taxes cause the war of independence. If they can tax you, then you are their slave. You're forced to work for them for nothing. That's slavery. It is becoming more and more difficult to be free. You're forced to work for them for nothing. And that's, I call it slavery. Matter of fact, I file criminal complaints for involuntary servitude. Uh, a, a subject is a slave. Taxation is forced work for nothing. This is McCullough versus Maryland, uh, U.S. Supreme Court, 1819. All subjects over which the sovereign power of the state extends are objects of taxation, but those over which it does not extend are exempt from taxation. This proposition may be pronounced as self-evident. It's obvious. The sovereignty of the state extends to everything which exists by its authority or its permission. There's two ways to conquer and enslave a nation. One is by sword and the other is by debt. When acting to enforce a statute and a subsequent amendments to the present date, the judge of municipal court is acting as an administrative officer and not in a judicial capacity. Courts administering or enforcing statutes do not act judicially, but merely ministerially, but merely act as an extension as an agent for the involved agency, but only in a ministerial and not in a discretionary capacity. That's why you get in these kangaroo courts and, the, and you say something and the judge will look over at the prosecutor and the prosecutor will say no. So the prosecutor is really the enemy. That's what you got to understand. The prosecutor is the enemy. 
The judge is just a, he's a brain-dead idiot doing what the prosecutor tells him to do. It's the accepted rule not only in the state courts but of the federal courts as well that when a judge is enforcing administrative law, they're described as mere extensions of the administrative agency for superior reviewing purposes as a bought and paid for a clerk. Judges who become involved in enforcement of mere statutes, civil or criminal in nature, and otherwise act as mere clerks of the involved agency. Ministerial officers are incompetent to receive grants of judicial power from the legislature. Their acts in attempting to exercise such powers are necessarily nullities. Where there is no jurisdiction, there is no judge. The proceeding is as nothing. Such has been the day from the law, the law from the days of Marshall Say. And that's a Supreme Court case. No, it's actually a federal court case, Manning versus Ketchum, quoting a Supreme Court case, Bradley versus Fisher. And they're quoting 10 Coke 68, which is Coke in the 1500s. Judge wears a military uniform. Judge sits there and plays stupid. If you fail to follow some obscure rule or procedure, they sell you into slavery. Everything they do is a fraud and a nullity. They're nothing but a bunch of thieves and pirates. Judge works for the state. Prosecutor works for the state. Police or witness works for the state. The vast majority of the disputes that the police initiate on behalf of their employer are also adjudicated by their employer where the plaintiff, the judge, the antagonist, the police, and the only witness, also the police, all represent the same party. And six corpus delicti, mens rea, acts reus, can be produced, doesn't technically qualify to be heard according to its own laws. The state, therefore, is indistinguishable from a criminal cartel. And how many people do they have in prison because of this? Now, the judicial power in cases of admiralty and maritime jurisdiction has never been supposed to extend to contracts made on the land and to be executed on land, but if the power of regulating commerce can be made the foundation of jurisdiction in its courts and a new and extended admiralty jurisdiction beyond its heretofore known and admitted limits may be created on water under that authority, the same reason would justify the same exercise of power on land. And that's Propeller Genesee Chief Patel versus Fitzhugh, U.S. Supreme Court, 1851. And this is Jackson versus Magnolia, U.S. Supreme Court, 1852. Next to revenue itself, the late extensions of the jurisdiction of the Admiralty are our greatest grievance. The American courts of Admiralty seem to be forming by degrees into a system that is to overturn our Constitution and depriving us of our best inheritance, the laws of the land. It would be thought in England a dangerous innovation if the trial of any matter on land was given to the Admiralty. It's because the people are brain-dead idiots. They're completely asleep at the wheel. Uh, and they're starting to wake up now, but otherwise they just bail in those checks, and that's all they want. They want the extortion. It's well known that in civil cases, in courts of admiralty and equity, equity and admiralty, juries do not intervene, and that courts of equity use trial by jury only in extraordinary cases to inform the conscience of the court. In other words, they can ignore it. And that's actually a jury trial. This is Title 18, United States Code, Section 7. The term Special Maritime Territorial Jurisdiction of the United States, as used in this title, includes the high seas or any waters within the Admiralty Maritime Jurisdiction of the United States and out of the jurisdiction of any particular state, and any vessel belonging in whole or in part to the United States or any citizen thereof. So all they do need to do is pull up a Social Security number, they get your date of birth, and they can pull everything up in their system. And that's a war crime, by the way. They're coercing information from you. It's none of their damn business. That's because you bunch of brain-dead idiots going out and getting Social Security numbers when there's no law that says anybody has to get one. Anyways, um, and any vessel belonging in whole or in part to the United States or any citizen thereof or any corporation created by or under the laws of the United States or of any state, territory, district, or possession thereof, when such vessel was within the admiralty and maritime jurisdiction of the United States and out of the jurisdiction of any particular state. Well, if you're in a territory, 
you're in the jurisdiction of the United States. So if you're under a military occupation, that's everywhere. You know, I don't know if you remember, there's that Brunson Brothers case. There's actually, there's other cases. There's like Texas versus, what was the, where they went and challenged the election? Texas versus, uh, um, and the Supreme Court came back and said they didn't have standing. See, the problem is, is that this case right here, Luther versus Borden, 1849. When a state forms a constitution which is approved by Congress that is a stop to deny its validity, the action of Congress cannot be inquired into for the judicial is bound to follow the action of the political department. In other words, they won't get mixed up in politics. Okay, I don't know how many people know this, but in the in uh, uh, ex parte Milligan, okay, that was during the Civil War. Supreme Court ruled, and the Lincoln didn't like it, and he sent troops to the Supreme Court. And to this day, Rule Forty Five. Look it up. It says that all mandates from the Supreme Court come under authority of the President of the United States. And so there's really no separation of powers. There's only a separation of powers as long as they feel like it. <laughs> there's really no separation of powers. That's why, I don't know if you remember, when Obama was passing his Obamacare and the, the courts of appeals were tearing it up and, and Obama came out and started railing on the courts and it went to the Supreme Court and John Roberts just came right in. Came right into line. He did what he was told. Okay, There's really no separation of powers when push comes to shove. Trial by Jerry ends all of this fake justice that's actually just us. We need to con be convening our own common law juries. We need to get off our backside and start convening our own common law juries, and it's a lot of hassle. There's no doubt about it. But, you know, what are we, what's going to happen on Judgment Day when we're standing before God and we're saying that, complaining about all this crap that's going on, and then he says, well, did you participate in the common law jury? What are you going to say? But in fact, in law, such statutes are intended to be applied to those who are here as residents in the state under the Interstate Commerce Clause of the Federal Constitution and the so-called 14th Amendment. That's a summary of U.S. versus United Mine Workers. Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except as punishment for a crime where the party shall have been duly convicted shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. And um, that's the current so-called 13th Amendment. And this is a Virginia court case. He, the prisoner, as a consequence of his crime, not only forfeited his liberty, but all his personal rights, except those which the law and its humanity affords him. He is, for the time being, a slave of the state. They're forcing you to work for them for nothing. And you need to nip that in the bud right up front. The best defense, this is warfare. you got to understand, this is warfare. You're engaged in warfare, and it's about time you started figuring that out. And the best defense is a good offense. And start attacking them before they ever see you coming. If a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel, and maketh merchandise of him, and selleth him, then that thief shall die. Thou shalt put evil away from among you. And so what's it going to look like when you're on Judgment Day and, and the Lord asks you, did you uh, put, the, put to death any of these people that were selling people into slavery? Rebellion to tyrants is obedience to God. We can have a benevolent dictator, a tyrant dictator. Obama was a textbook tyrant. Biden's a pathological liar. Obama was a pathological liar. Clinton was a pathological liar. Pelosi gets up and tells the House, we can't read this bill until after we approve it. You know, there's a guy by the name of Lindsey Williams. Back to the book about Trump. And Lindsey Williams is a Southern Baptist preacher that went up to the oil Alaska pipeline and uh, preached the gospel up there. And... Um, 
they liked what he was doing so much that they went and brought him into their board meetings and he met all these, started hobnobbing with all these elites and stuff like that. And he's been keeping in touch with them ever since. And so every six months or year, he'd be putting out a video saying, this is what the elite are telling me that they're going to do. And everything that he said was going to happen would happen. And what happened is when uh, Trump got elected, the elites told him and he told everybody else that God intervened. And so God has given us a little bit of time here. And now Trump is out of there. And the, and the, the same elite said that when Trump is out of office, it's going to go back to the same thing that they were doing before. And that's exactly what's happened. And that's what Biden is doing. So we need to be getting ready. We're in the end times. It's going to be really, really ugly. Matter of fact, I think now is a good time to talk about overnight in Bangkok. Yeah, this is overnight in Bangkok. So this is actually uh, uh, written by Cliff High. Cliff High has been saying, he says that we're in the middle of the, what's called a big ugly right now. And um, so um, I'm just waiting for the thing to get over there, and I can't go and look because it'll affect, it'll show that I'm looking. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, Cliff High said that um, it's going to get, it's gonna, there's going to be assassinations. There's going to be all sorts of stuff going on over the next, he said it's going to last at least until summer. And he said that, that people, the normies, are going to wake up to what's happened, that, that they're trying to, they're, the, the New World Order crowd are trying to kill them, and the normies are going to be pissed. And... Um, there's going to be assassinations. There's going to be all sorts of stuff going down. And he said, he said that it's been in his data sets for decades. And so this is overnight in Bangkok. It says, don't listen to those rumors. This is Cliff High's Substack. I would recommend everybody should uh, subscribe to that because he's a wealth of knowledge. Anyways, overnight in Bangkok. Don't listen to those rumors. Citrep. It seems that the Thai royal family had a princess who was a good global citizen. She took three of the Pfizer shots. She went into a coma a while back. The Thai royal family was and is very distressed, understandably. Investigations were ordered. The distress of the royals was increased by the reports coming back from their investigators. It seems that Pfizer apparently did no safety studies on this shot. Shortly thereafter, Thailand cancels the COVID contracts with Pfizer on the basis of fraud. That means they're open for suit. As may be expected, all of this has taken weeks. The investigators are still at work as this is a giant global scam slash fraud and many threads to trace back to sources. People known to me for decades are living as expat, that's expatriate, ex, expat. Um, Americans in Thailand, expatriated, that's it, expatriated, Americans in Thailand. Two of them are outstanding, though now retired, into a different life. Investigators, one worked for over 30 years as a naval officer, the last 15 of which were involved in criminal fraud cases. The other was an investigator for the Washington State Patrol, again, criminal investigations. Both are in resident in Bangkok these last few years. My ex-Navy friend is a serious linguist concentrating on um, 
seven Asian languages. That's how I know him. Rumors. These are some rumors that he's getting. They have revealed to me that certain, that several different sources are reporting to them that something, that something, a really big something is disturbing the Bangkok underworld. My guys have contact with it through a couple of martial arts dojos. Both are hearing the same rumors, disturbance in the force kind of rumors. The rumor to not listen to says that assassins are being recruited out of the very deep holes in the martial arts world. Me? I would not want to have this logo on my letterhead as an executive. <laughs> so draw your own conclusions. He said don't pay any attention to the rumors. Okay, so back to the presentation. Rebellion to tyrants is obedience to God. Wow. Two Republicans in New Jersey have already been assassinated this week. Wow, that's interesting. We the people are the right mass, rightful masters of both Congress and the courts, not to overthrow the Constitution, but to overthrow the men who would pervert the Constitution. Rebellion to tyrants is obedience to God. It's time to get unplugged, folks. All executive orders are regulations for property of the government and therefore a color of law. Color of law is something that looks like law but isn't. It's a felony to violate your rights under the color of law. They can violate your rights as long as they can claim good faith. Tell them it's a felony and have witnesses. That's why I sent out my notice and demands to take away their good faith. Rebellion to tyrants is obedience to God. America needs God. We certainly do. Our rights come from God. That's why they want to get rid of that Constitution, because it's got God written all over it. they got to get rid of that thing if they want to enslave us, because they'll never do it with that Constitution. Thou shalt have no other gods before me, Exodus 20 and 3, King James Version. All of my scriptures, anytime I talk about the scriptures, is King James Version. The New World Order will require that you worship government. That's going on in China right now with the Falun Gong, that they're doing their organ harvesting programs. They're killing them because they don't want to worship government. So, when you demand the trial by jury... Remind the fake judge that his oath of office requires that he honor the supreme law of the land. Remind the fake judge that the War of Independence was fought over the denial of trial by jury. Remind the fake judge what a trial by jury, trial by jury is. Remind the fake judge is a, uh, that a, trial, a, a jury trial fails to be a trial by jury. And um, remind the fake judge that uh, the uh, under Article 6 of the Constitution that... I don't care what your state codes say. The supreme law of the land says otherwise. So far from my knowledge, every time this issue has been pushed, the case gets dropped. I have some upcoming videos uh, coming up on uh, Rumble, one on standing, uh, do-it-yourself kangaroo courts number 20, standing, do-it-yourself kangaroo courts number 19, legislative courts. You know that all... Legislative courts, that means all of them, can give advisory decisions only that do not have the force of law. Yep. And then kangaroo courts number 21, clean hands. 
And then YouTube deleted my channel again the second time. And then right to keep and bear arms and IRS authority. Those are all videos that are coming up. Um, other than that, we're pretty well done with this presentation. If anybody's got any questions, I'm open to any questions. Um, it's hard to say. I can't tell how many people are on this thing. Usually I can tell. I know there's at least two because I see the chat. Anyways, I appreciate you guys showing up. Thank you very much. And if nobody's got anything else, then we're just going to go ahead and end this thing. It's been going on for, looks like, how long? An hour and a half. Oh, 23 people on here. Well, that's good. That's good. I don't know why mine doesn't say anything about that. Anyways, appreciate you guys showing up and everybody else. And, uh, you know, spread the word. Subscribe to my Rumble channel. Uh, that way, um, um, you know, I'm going to, I'm trying to migrate all my videos over from YouTube. But, you know, uh, some reason Rumble's done a few of them, but they haven't done that many. So, um, anyways. Yeah, the right to keep and bear arms. That's a good one. That's a good one. And again, that's the Constitution. That's actually a common law right. It's only affirmed by the Constitution. So, thank you for watching and uh, and uh, check out my other ones. I'm going to try and do them every Thursday. And so we'll have a live stream of some sort on Thursday nights. Thursday nights are not bad. Friday nights are kind of like a date night. And Thursday nights are, you know, people are usually at home. And uh, so I'm going to try and do them every Thursday. So uh, those are the upcoming ones that are coming up for Thursdays. And um, I'm glad that, uh, you know, it's a journey. Nobody knows everything. And uh, it's a networking thing. You know, nobody can do it by themselves. I need other people being on point and, and uh, understanding what's happening and how it's happening. So, um, and... Um, so um, I guess that's about it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, gone up to 26. Well, that's good. Well, at the very end. Eh? <laughs> well, you know, they can always watch it from the beginning, too. So um, so if anybody's got any questions, I'll, st I'll stay on here for a few more minutes. I'm sure glad I got this, this, this mic finally working. I was just having no end of grief with that thing. Uh, but uh, so I'll stay on for a couple more minutes to see if anybody's got any questions.